there are two or three things to, to think about. The first of which is to ask yourself what kind of problem you're trying to solve. I focus on behaviour, the choice style, the decision style that people are, in your audience are, are making in your category. Once you know what kind of problem you're trying to solve, then you can more easily work out what kind of solutions out there are appropriate. So, for example, when Professor Martin Elliott at Great Ormond Street Hospital wanted to um, solve the problems he had identified in uh, heart surgery, cardiac heart surgery, he worked out that he had a handover problem, not a medical problem to deal with. Knowing a handover problem meant you could look to Formula One and their pit stop protocols, look at airlines and so on and so on. So what kind of thing are you dealing with allows you to find the appropriate thing to copy? It's one of the big questions. Sam Bowles, who's a great evolutionary economist, um, puts it this way. He says, uh, knowing who to copy and when and what are the big questions of survival for the human race. And it's true of us as individuals as well. So how do you know? It depends. It depends. For example, if you've got a problem that um, a marketplace behaviour that is about experts, you need to find experts. If, you've, if your marketplace is shaped by people copying peers, then you need to create the impression that all the peers around your consumer are choosing your brand. So, for example, in that case, you might have something like the Apple white earbuds, which are terrible earpieces to listen to music, but really great signals that this is popular. And it's no mistake that Apple, for several years, ran the silhouette campaign for their music which allowed um, us to see how many other people were wearing these white earpieces and therefore using Apple products. I think there's a difference between brands that are really good copiers and brands that allow us to copy each other. Mm. Apple is genius at the latter. Mm. Uh, you might also say, um, lawyers notwithstanding, they're also very good at copying other people as well, other brands. So Apple, with a few exceptions, like the Newton PDA mm. or the Cube server, Apple don't go into a market as the first entrant. They've learned not to do that. They let other people establish a market and teach a behaviour to the initial and then they do it better. They're better, simpler, more user-friendly, uh, and more pleasurable than the other competitors, the established competitors would do. Um, they also allow us to copy brilliantly. I mentioned the white earpieces. Also on the back of, um, you know, MacBook Air is very popular now in marketing land. I have one myself and I love it. The white backlit Apple logo on the lid is not for me as the user. It's for you as someone observing the user. And there was a time when Apple flipped the logo from being readable by me to readable by the audience, by people around me. So they're just really good at baking in that popularity. They also have used social events. Two weeks ago was something called um, Dub Dub, which is the Worldwide Developers Conference where but the, you know, the people kill each other for one of the 5,000 tickets and it's streamed to tens of thousands of people around the world. That's where they make their announcements for hardware to a community that's really, really excited. So they use social mechanics throughout the piece as well. The first thing you do have better ideas is try not to be, have an original one. Grayson Perry puts it this way, he says, originality as a means to create original ideas is for people with short memories. There are all these great pieces of ideas that are just lying around that you could use as a start point. Why don't you go there and then build something with it rather than try and have this whole thing come fully formed out of your head being the great creative genius you are. He knows, like all great artists know, that copying is the essence of creativity. That's it. Copy, copy, copy. <laughs>